Okay, so part two of the on schedule setup and utilization. Kind of had a little uh, snafu there at the ending of that part one. So I apologize for that, um, but we'll go ahead and continue on here. We left off talking about the family appointments and creating the blocks. Another thing I want to talk about up here is um, the track arrival. So if you have this set up within your appointment, you can go ahead and communicate within the office about the patient's arrival. So the um, little stoplight looking icon here is red when um, the patient's appointment time occurs and it stays red. So if they're late, um, you know, we can see that on the appointment, on the schedule. Once that patient arrives, you can simply right click set next arrival indicator. So that's letting the clinical team know the patient is here and ready to go. Now, some offices will wait until that patient has filled out, you know, their appropriate forms before they mark that. But some offices will go ahead and do it right when the patient walks in the door. Once the clinical team brings the patient back, they'll go ahead, right click again and they will set next arrival indicator. So that green, um, we all know they're back in the chair. You also have this track arrival at the top here. So that's a nice way to kind of keep track of your patients and how long they've been waiting, how long they've been in the chair. So you can track each patient by provider. So we have color codes here, obviously the red, um, are the minutes elapsed between the appointment time and the arrival time. So how many minutes late the patient was. Minutes waiting um, is gonna show you from the time that they're marked um, that they've arrived until they were marked seated. And then minutes in the chair is gonna be green, the time elapsed since the patient was seated in the chair. And then we can see this by provider. So you can create a report for this if that's something you wanna keep track of. You can also hit control H on your keyboard and that's going to go ahead and hide the names of the patients. For uh, security purposes, control H. We talked about the views in the setup and the print for schedule. The help is really just going to be your, um, it just popped over here, but it's going to bring your FAQ open. So if there's a keyword you need to type in here. You can also edit uh, appointments from here or blocks. You can confirm from here as well. Let's talk about the schedule notes. Um, the schedule notes are great. If you need to communicate throughout the office um, for certain things for the day, like maybe you're gonna have a lunch and learn that day from Patterson from one to two, you can go ahead and type that in there and then you can hit save. It's gonna go ahead and document, you know, which user made the note and you can click this here and it'll go ahead and expand it. But this is gonna be by day. So whatever kind of notes you need to make in there for the team to see, um, you know, in relation to patients that day or anything you have scheduled, um, you can enter that. You can dock that on the side too. You know, you can either, um, leave it so it hides and then you can click on it or you can use the push pin and kind of always have that on the side there. So the schedule notes are a real great way to communicate between your team. And again, these toolbar bars are customizable. So if you right click anywhere in the toolbar, you can um, unclick, you know, show text. So if you just want to see the icons, you can do that. Um, I like to see my text. You can also um, customize it. So you can rearrange or remove or add icons here. So if there's something you don't need, you can simply left click and drag it right down into here and remove it. Right? If there's something you want to see, simply drag it back up and wherever you see that black bar appear, that's where it's gonna go ahead and um, populate there. 
So you can customize those toolbars and that is per workstation. So this here is just going to take us back to the practice management screen. You'll get into the patient's account from here. We can get to the walkout from here, which um, I typically re recommend getting from the walkout from the account, but we're going to talk about that in another video. View insurance claims, your lab tracking, you can see from here, I have a, another video on lab tracking and how to do that as well as prescriptions. Treatment plan. Um, I do have another video on that too. You can get to your patient's smart doc from here. So their electronic little filing cabinet, anything that you have scanned in or imported in. And your edit patient screen. So, you know, the edit patient screen holds a lot of great information. Again, your preferences is a great screen to to kind of make sure your hygiene recalls are accurate and your preferred providers are accurate. And this is the patient registration. So um, don't know if we necessarily need that on that toolbar there in the back. You can get to the chart from here if you click on that. We have some great videos on charting. And then your perio exam, you can get to the images from here. And then we'll talk about Messenger. Messenger is great. It's a great in-office communication tool as well. Um, so you can message back and forth between um, team members. So who, whoever is logged in will show up here on the left. This will be the log and then your new messages here. You can um, come in here and um, you know, create some options as far as, you know, if you want to hear an alert when a message is received or if you just want to, if you want to hear a sound or just see an alert, you can also change your font and your color. Right. Um, and then you could change your username too. So instead of just your initials, you can actually put your name in there. So that's a great way to communicate, you know, back and forth between you know, front and back office and different operatories without having to kind of get up and go looking for somebody. Um, there is a, a report you can run. So all of these messages are saved. So just make sure you're being kind and politically correct. Um, you can also add quick text too. So if there's some quick answers you want to be able to just click and add, um, you can do that as well. So if you type something here, um, thank you. You can make that, you know, part of your one of your quick texts. Okay, just just makes things more efficient. When you log into EagleSoft for the day, there is a checkbox on that login screen that will automatically log you into Messenger. You can also get to reports from here and the clinical exam, but a lot of this stuff too you can get to right from that patient's chart with these little drop down integration buttons here. out of here. We'll talk about next how to schedule a patient. So many different ways. Um, the easiest way I find is just finding your time and day on the schedule. You'd like to schedule someone. You can double click within that slot. You can go to your patient list. Find your patient. I'm just going to go ahead. You can type in um, the last name and hit tab. Oh, that's not the last name. That's the first name. You can search. You can change your um, methods of search. You know, if you want to search by first name, you can do that. You can search by cell phone, social number, what have you. You have those options there. So everyone with that last name is going to pop up. I'll go ahead and pick Dexter. And his alerts popping up here. Now we're going to go ahead and pick what we are scheduling him for. I'm going to put him as a new patient exam with doctor. So now we have this here. To add our services, we're going to come down here and we're going to add our service code. So you can go through and individually add each service code 
or you can create explosion codes, which I find are fantastic. Um, explosion codes are a group of codes that you typically use um, together. So, you know, when we see a new patient, we're typically doing, you know, a lot of the same procedures. So I created some exploding codes here and I'll show you how to do that. But I do have a new patient adult profi exploding code. So I can go ahead and select that and it's going to populate that um, comp exam. So if I scroll up here, let me make this a little bit bigger. We'll see the comp exam, the full mouth series, profi, oral cancer exam, paracharting. So whatever codes you put within that exploding code will populate here. And then you can go ahead and hit and it's showing you too, we're scheduled for 50 minutes. You can go ahead and hit save. And since we did mark him as pre-med, we're gonna see that pill. It's gonna ask if we wanna prescribe anything at that particular time. We're also going to see patient alerts here. So you can double click that. And then the question mark, that just means he's unconfirmed. So when you do call to confirm, you can right click, confirmation and you can hit confirmed. So now he is scheduled. Again, if you need to move that appointment, you can either one of two ways. You can highlight him and click move, right click and hit move, or you can drag him over to the queue. Everything, um, each one of those options is gonna all, all put him in the queue. So you're gonna end up in the same place, just different methods for getting there. Oh, let's just say we're going to leave them here. So let's talk about the service codes and the exploding codes. So when we go to list and service codes, let's take a look at um, the periodic oral evaluation. So I'll hit edit. A couple things to talk about here. Um, when we're doing um, the chart setup, we have what are called quick picks on the side of the chart. So when we take a look at that chart, we'll go back here. We have buttons on the side that are designed for um, efficient charting. So we see, you know, comprehensive oral evaluation. When we hover over here, this button is for the, it's the exploding code for the adult profi exam and bite wings. So all of these um, abbreviations are coming from the actual service code. So when we go back into that service code list and we want to change, let's go back to the um, full mouth series. If we want to see those abbreviations and not necessarily just the number, you can go in here because a lot of times what happens is it comes in, um, you know, as the number. But to use those quick pick buttons in um, just in a more efficient, easier way, it's nice to just, you know, put an abbreviation of what that code actually is. And then your description too. you know, make sure your description's accurate. You can change this if you need to. And then we can also take a look at um, a couple things here. So the full mouth series. What we want is we want that to update the patient's record. Anytime that's walked out, it's gonna go and update that's um, when the full mouth series was taken. So when you look at that patient's record in a few different areas, say we look at the chart, you'll be able to see without having to search through the images when the last full mouth series was walked out. So there's a couple areas we'll see it from here. Um, I think we see it from the, um, we'll see it from the account screen as well. So if we look at the uh, account here, We'll see that. We'll go back to last patient. And let's go ahead and just click off these alerts. We'll see here, right, the last full mouth when that was walked out. We'll also see that show up um, in the perio chart too. So 
And there's various areas within the software you'll, you'll be able to see that information. There you go. So we make sure that our codes for the Profi, we make sure that our codes for Bitewings and the Pano and the Full Mouth are set to update. So if we look at our bite wings here and I go to edit, update patient's last bite wing. So that's what that's gonna go ahead and do. You'll mark too who that service is normally performed by so that it's going to default that to that um, type of provider when you schedule that. And then when you look at the chart setup, let's pull this over here from my other monitor. This is a button group. So if you don't want this to be a main button, quick pick button, you can actually put this underneath the button group. Um, and that's how you do that there from the service code list. Also within your service code, um, you know, you can change the fees from here as well. So if you just wanna update a couple services, you wanna change the fee, you could do that from the individual service code. And then we'll take a look at exploding code. So if I go to list, and exploding codes here. This is where all the exploding codes I have entered in here lie. Um, what you wanna do, let's take a look here. So when I look at an exploding code for my adult profi exam bite wings, what I like to do, what I mentioned before, I like to put a period in the name um, first thing. That way it brings these exploding codes to the top of your service code list so you don't have to go searching for them. So when you create a new service code, it's gonna ask you to give it um, a name here. I always put a period. I think there's a five character limit, including that period. You'll then add a description of what that exploding code entails. So it's gonna be the Profi exam in fluoride. You can give it a display abbreviation in case you wanna make that one of your main quick pick buttons, or you can put it in one of the, uh, the button groups as well. Then you're gonna go ahead and add and you're gonna put your service codes in here. So I already entered those in. And then once you hit okay, you have your exploding code. So there's various combinations you can make. You know, I know that, you know, when you're gonna propose treatment, maybe propose a, uh, a treatment plan for an implant. If we look at the implant, we can include the extraction. Um, you can include a bone graft. You can include the surgical placement of the implant body, the custom abutment. Uh, implant crown and the seat. So you can, it's just, it makes it super easy to propose uh, treatment with exploding codes and super easy for hygiene. So if we're gonna go out, let's just go out, um, you know, six months for Colby, say he's gonna schedule a six month cleaning. We go out six months. I can double click at the time I wanna schedule him. Let's see if he'll come up as last patient. No because I wasn't in his account. Let's just, let me show you this. Let's hit no, cancel out of here. So I'm going to go into Colby's chart here and take a look around. And let's just say we're gonna complete our bite wings, our profi for today and our exam. I'm gonna right click and well, he's already posted to walk out, but I would normally right click and post it to walk out and save it. And then we'll go six months out and we're gonna reschedule him for another cleaning. I'll go back to last patient. It brings him right in. It's telling me he's in the quick fill list. I can take a look at that. Let's see, he's not in there for a cleaning. It's telling me there's planned services. Let's see what those planned services are. There's no cleaning there. So I'm going to go ahead. I know that at that next appointment, he's not going to need bite wings, but um, he might need um, fluoride. So I can come up here, find my exploding code, adult profi periodic exam and fluoride, double click it, and it brings all of them in there. I double check my provider, make sure it's under my name. So I can either right click here and change the provider, or I can change it from these drop down menus here. And it tells me the fee on the bottom, and I hit save. And now I have his appointment scheduled six months out. So very easy to do.
So that's how you're going to um, go ahead and create your exploding codes. That's how you're going to go in and take a look at your service codes and edit them. Um, again, when I talked about the quick pick buttons, those are here on this side. Anything that's in the drop down, the quick pick buttons are set up in your file, preferences, and quick picks. So to set those up, you're just going to click on the hyperlink. You're going to go ahead and pick the code you want to use. I'm just going to change it to periodic exam. So you have 22 of those quick pick buttons and you have two condition buttons. So I hit OK. And we go back into the chart. And now we can see that this quick pick button here is a periodic exam. Um, okay, I hope you found that this was useful um, in using your on schedule and setting up and um, go ahead and stay tuned for more videos.